The Oklahoma City Thunder falls short in their comeback over the Chicago Bulls. SGA plays like a star. Mark deserves a ton of praise for how he coached against Billy Donovan. Vucevic was incredible. Levine was incredible. The Thunder played the somewhat Bulls, and it was a very fun affair as the Thunder come back from down 28 but lose in the final stages. All of this and more coming up on today's Locked On Thunder, the Locked On Podcast Network, your team's every day. You are Locked On Thunder, your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Locked On Thunder Podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, Ron Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LO Thunder Pod. Email the show, LO Thunder Pod at gmail.com. On today's show, we are going to dive into the Oklahoma City Thunder talk, taking on the Chicago Bulls and Billy Donovan. The Bulls rest almost everybody. The Thunder look to snap their losing streak but fall just short, but despite SGA putting on yet another all-star level display. This was an interesting game as today's show is brought to you by PrizePix, prizepix.com. Use the code NBA and get to your app store and download it today to use prizepix.com. PrizePix is daily fantasy made easy. This is a very interesting game. The Thunder got down by a lot, but made one of their patented comebacks, just could not get quite over the hump in this one. But we start the way we always do with our game overview. And in this game, Derek Favors was out with a back injury, but Critchy was out with an ankle injury. And then Maldon, Poku, Watson, all still in the G League. Isaiah Roby also did not play as a coach's decision. Uh, Lonzo Ball was out with a knee injury. Alex Caruso was out with a wrist injury. Derek Jones Jr. was out with a knee injury. And then Patrick Williams is out with a wrist injury. Then late in the action, right before tip-off, we found out that DeMar DeRozan was going to be out due to rest in Oklahoma City, so he did not play either. So a lot of key contributors like Ball and Caruso and DeRozan, as well as Patrick Williams, was out for the Chicago Bulls. The Thunder start out with Shea, Dort, Giddy, Wiggins, and Robinson Earl. The Bulls start out with Troy Brown Jr., A.O., Zach uh, Levine, Javante Green, and Nikola Vucevic. The Thunder got down by 28 points. Six times this game was tied, three times the lead changed hands. The Thunder played well in the first quarter. At the end of the first, in the second quarter, the Bulls really made their run. Then the Thunder fought back in the latter stages of the third quarter and the fourth quarter. Uh, They were able to have a shot to win this game at the buzzer despite being down 28 points. The last three home games that the Thunder have hosted the Bulls, the Bulls have almost blown 20-point leads. They actually blew the 20-point leads twice, and then on Monday... They fell just short of blowing a 20-point lead to the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Thunder do fall 111 to 110. The Bulls out-rebound OKC 51 to 44. The Bulls had 16 turnovers to OKC's 11. The Thunder shot 41% from the floor, 35% from deep, and 75% at the line. The Bulls shot 46% at the floor, uh, 38% from deep, and 73% at the line. The Thunder won points in the paint 42 to 38. They lost second chance points 16 to 9. The Thunder also lost fast break points 14 to 12. And the OKC bench outscored Chicago's bench 37 to 23. Chicago won the first three quarters of this game, but Oklahoma City won the fourth frame, uh, but of course lost the game by one. The Bulls had four double digit scores with one and nine. OKC also had four double figure scores and one with nine. Levine had 23 for the Bulls, AO had 24 for the Bulls, and started out red hot. I believe it was like, what, 5 for 5, 9 for 9 for AO to start this game. Vucevic had 26 points, 15 rebounds, 4 assists, a steal, and 3 blocks. And this is our first big story from this game. Vucevic could really do what he wanted to on the floor. He was a man amongst boys. We knew coming into this year that the Thunder were going to lack size. The Thunder were going to lack a traditional big man. The Thunder wanted to play this small ball, positionless style of basketball, this brand of basketball where they're very versatile. They're very switchable, but it's easy to expose them down low. And that kind of mismatch gets even brighter whenever you do not have a body like Derek Favors to throw out somebody down low. So with Favors being out, 
if they wanted to spoon feed Vucevic, it felt like he could score 40 points, 50 points in this game. And the Thunder really didn't have any answers for him. As you see, 26 points, 15 rebounds, four assists, a steal, and three blocks. It felt hopeless going up against Vucevic and, and kind of a really, really good center and all-star caliber center that's been in all-star games before with the Magic and you know traded back to traded to Chicago in the last deadline. You know, it, it felt like the Thunder just couldn't stop him, and thus the Bulls grow their 28-point lead, and thus the Bulls seem like they're going to run away with this game. And the big story is the fact that Vooch did finish with just 26 points. And I say just as if that's not an insane number, especially uh, for his position. But when you dig deeper and you look at the flow of this game, Mark put Kenny Hustle on Vucevic. Yeah, a small forward was guarding Vucevic. And it worked. And it worked. Mark threw different laps on there. Lines that we've never seen play a minute together before. And they worked. Lineups that we have not seen for a single minute this season, and we're already nearing February, and it worked. For a team that's been very durable, a team that's that's uh, had the least games lost due to injury, a team that has been healthy all year for the most part and has not changed their roster at all, they still had a new lineup to throw out there in this game, and it worked. And the big thing was putting Kenny Hustle onto Vucevic to me. Because I've said on this podcast since last year, Mark is the very best basketball coach the Thunder ever had. He will not have the records for that, right? He will not have the fastest coach to X amount of wins or uh, X amount of seasons to start his career over 500, right? Because his roster does not include Kevin Durant and, and Russell Westbrook or Russell Westbrook and Paul George or uh, any of these other star-related teams that the Thunder have had and, and are accustomed to over the years. His rosters just are not built that way. But as a pound-for-pound basketball coach, Mark is the very best the Thunder have ever had. And going up against Billy Donovan in this game, uh, you could kind of tell why. I think that Mark is a coach that is not afraid to think outside the box and to be unconventional and to act out of desperation. A lot of coaches will just sit there and take their beating and sit there and say, well, this is the way we play. This is the way we drew it up. So we have to stick with this plan. You think that the Thunder had a meeting before the game and said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put Kenny Hustle on Vucevic. No. And conventional wisdom tells you that's a stupid idea. That's what thinking inside the box does to you. It tells you that Kenny Hustle guarding Vucevic is a stupid idea. But down the stretch, it worked. Down the stretch, that's why you got within a point of Chicago and could have beat them. At the buzzer. With SGA taking a sidestep three, that looked good. Because of moves like that. And Mark will not get the recognition for this until this team reaches the playoffs because we don't really evaluate coaches until they're in the playoffs. And we don't really pay attention to coaches until it's time for the playoffs. But this is a part of that core. When you start listing off the core members of the Thunder and the path back to success, to me, you have to also factor in the coaching staff, which is a really, really good staff. And a staff that's comfortable being uncomfortable that they are willing to do anything and try anything and explore anything. And it results in a light bulb moment, put our second best defender, if you want to count Lou Dorr as number one defender, on Vucevic, and let's just see what happens because playing the quote-unquote traditional style is not working either. So what's what's the harm? We're going to keep getting beat? Oh, well, we're doing that already. Being willing to explore these quirks is the difference in winning playoff series. Think of how many playoff series the Thunder lost over these years, over the span of two coaches with Scott Brooks and Billy Donovan, because they just simply were not willing to take a risk. They weren't willing to try out a gimmick. They weren't willing to think outside the box. And if they did, they maybe only used it for a handful of minutes. And I think that Mark is going to be the total opposite of that, where he's going to want to find the advantage any way he can. He's going to want to find the the advantage in the margins for the Thunder and do whatever it takes to win games. I think that he's going to be an elite coach, and I think that he's an elite coach. And you know, he won't get the he won't get the national recognition for that. You you will not get validation saying that until he does it in the playoffs. But right now, I'm going to say he's an elite coach and the best coach the Thunder ever had. And I said that last year too. But this was another prime example 
of what Mark can do as head coach and what his staff is able to do. And credit to them as well. You're down 28 points in an NBA game. Your season is lost. I mean, this team is not going to make the playoffs. This team is not going to make somewhere at the title. They're just playing for pride at this point. And it's, again, not the all-star break yet. But yet still, this team stayed together, fought for their coach, fought for their players next to them, and made this a game and tried to come back in this one uh, and almost did win the game at the buzzer. Uh, that, that's huge. That's huge. But what's also huge is Prize Picks. Prize Picks is awesome. It's fantastic. You're going to want to check them out because Prize Picks is very, very fun. It is the best NBA daily fantasy prop game on the market. Prize Picks offers more NBA props than any other prop operator and offers all of the superstar players as well as bench players only recording a handful of stats each game. Price Picks offers props you can uh, think of from points, assists, rebounds, threes made, etc. You pick two to five players and over under on those projected numbers, and you can win up to 10 times on any entry. It's just you versus the projected numbers. I recently placed a uh, flex play inner uh, for SGA points on the over, and then of course hit. Uh, you cannot go wrong betting that right now. SGA is on a hot streak scoring. Uh, so you doubled my money. It only took me 30 seconds to make my selection. Uh, it's that easy, folks. Prize Picks also offers a mixed sport entry, so you can take the over on SGA points combined with the over on Patrick Mahomes Yard Sunday in the same entry and be able to win some money with your cross sports knowledge. Use the award winning app on the App Store and Google Play Store. Prize Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. Go to prizepicks.com or use their app and download the app today. All users that deposit will use our code NBA and get 50% of uh, $50 free in your first price pick entry. And it will allow you to win some money, some free money with price picks. That's right. All of the users that use the code NBA will get $50 free on your first price picks entry across uh, any single point. Price picks is daily fantasy made easy. We are back on the lockdown thunder podcast, the lockdown podcast network, your teams every day. I want to thank you for listening to Lockdown Thunder, making us your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you talking Thunder basketball. Make sure you're also prepared for the trade deadline. That's right, folks. The trade deadline is coming very, very soon. And we have you covered. On the Lockdown Podcast Network, we are going to have a two-hour live stream. Get a little of this cast, folks. Not only will our local experts like myself be in there whenever our teams make a move, but... Our host panel is incredible. You've got Josh Lloyd, host of Lockdown Fantasy Basketball, the number one fantasy basketball podcast in the world. You've got John Corrales, host of Lockdown NBA and Lockdown Celtics. You've also got Antonio Daniels. That's right. The Thunder legend, Antonio Daniels. He's our colleague. He works for us here at Lockdown as well as the color commentator for the New Orleans Pelicans on Bali Sports, I believe it's called Southeast or whatever New Orleans is called. But he's also, of course, the former NBA player and the former pre- and post-game show host for the Thunder, Antonio Daniels. So make sure you go check that out on February 10th from 2 to 4. We're going to have you covered there. Make sure you have your push notifications turned on for our uh, YouTube channel, Locked NBA YouTube. We'll be live over there. I'll be in the chat typing along with you guys and, and interacting with y'all and telling you what I hear about the Thunder deadline. So make sure you're in there to talk with me as well as we watch that show together. And I'll be hopping on the show uh, when and if the Thunder make a move. So make sure you're prepared for that. Make sure you subscribe to every Locked On podcast for free. We're all free and available across all platforms, including the platform of YouTube. So subscribe for free and you never miss a show. It's a daily podcast talking about the Oklahoma City Thunder and the NBA. So Getting back into this game, we gave a lot of praise to Mark, but also on the court, you have to give praise to SGA. SGA was a star again. 31 points, three rebounds, 10 assists, three steals, a block, three turnovers, two for five from three, 52% from the floor. He shot 14 free throws. SGA shot 14 free throws. Do you know how exhausting that has to be to attack the rim the way SGA does? Just how utterly exhausting it is. And an NBA game, to just play an NBA game, much less to play downhill in the NBA, much less play downhill so much that you're getting fouled and you're going to the line 14 times. Insane. Insane. And SGA puts it all out there every single night. I so badly wanted that step back to go down for him. 
uh, you know, around the buzzer. I believe there'd be like what a second left, but still I so badly wanted it to go down for him uh, because he's, he's really exhausted himself over these last few games to try to put uh, the thunder on top and to get the thunder a win. I think though this year, he won't be an all-star this year. Uh, he's, you know, his, his basketball reference page, so to say, is not as flashy as it was last year and the team's not winning and, 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 the voters value that a lot more. And of course the whole fan vote aspect of it doesn't help, but still uh, he won't be an all-star this year. I don't think, but he's still an all-star caliber guy and weeks like this last week and the week that he won player of the week and most of this season uh, is why you give him a max contract. It's why you of course spend your money on SGA, lock him down with no contract opt-outs and he is your star of the future. I think that you have the coach in place. You have the number one guy in place. You have Josh Giddy in place. You have Lou Dort in place. And you have two really good picks coming this year and a third first-round pick to boot. And we'll see how that all shakes out. But every night like this, whenever SGA is just getting to the, to the cup at will against a good defensive team, I know they're missing ball. I know they're missing Crusoe. I know I'm missing Patrick Williams. Those are three great defenders and three three reasons why this team is so good defensively. And we haven't got to see Patrick Williams much this year because of those injuries. But still, uh, it was impressive to see SGA do what he did today against Chicago. So, so uh, happy for SGA. Uh, really, really excited for the future of the Thunder. And part of that future comes with drafting well. And one of those high draft picks uh, that paid off was, of course, Josh Kitty. And another draft pick is Darren Wiggins that paid off. And, of course, you got Wiggins at 55 overall, and he scored five points tonight, got a rebound. Uh, he, he was 33% from the three, 50% from the floor. And with Wiggins, it, you know, it's not flashy. It's not just kind of leaping out the box scratchy most nights, but he had a really solid game today, really played his role very well. And I want to touch, I want to kind of tie him and JRE together as the two rookies tonight because JRE, he's awesome. Now, again, I said last time, uh, I don't know if I'd put him top 12 the way that Richard Stamen did last. And, and Richard Stamen, to his credit, Mavs draft on Twitter. He's our locked on uh, NBA draft host on Tuesdays. He comes on this podcast routinely to talk about the draft. The entire draft cycle last year, Richard had Jerry in, in his top 12, on his top 12, top 12 big board. From our first episode before the college ball season started to our last episode, the day of the draft, he had Jerry in his top 12. And then Sam Presti got him in the second round. I don't know if I'd go that high, but the pathway for Wiggins and for Jerry to be meaningful NBA players, there's not a lot of hurdles on that path. It's a pretty clear shot. In fact, for Jerry, I would struggle to find a way that he's not a 13-year vet. Obviously, injuries can happen to anybody, and unforeseen things can happen to anybody, but Jerry has it, and Wiggins does as well. And Wiggins, to, to play the brand of defense he plays as a rookie, it's uh, it's unreal. It's unbelievable. Now, of course, he has great leaders in Lou Dort and Kenny Hustle to help him and, and usher him into the NBA uh, lifestyle as a defender. But as long as that three-point shot keeps coming around and how efficient he is at relocating off ball and finding the soft spot of the defense in scoring, Jerry, Aaron Wiggins, those are great value picks. Those are guys that help you fill out this roster. Now, are they are they going to be your top three, you know, guys of your of your championship team? Are they going to be even starters in your championship team? Maybe not. But what they are going to be is very important depth pieces, and that's the difference in winning and losing titles. Think of how many great Thunder teams might have been derailed by their lack of depth. And. I have a lot of faith in the upside of Jerry's shot and Wiggins' shot from three. So if you can turn those two guys into good defenders and high upside, good three-point shooters at 55 and 32, amazing picks. Amazing picks for for Sam Presti. I I really like what we saw from this rookie class uh, in this game. And Lou Dort also played well. 16 points, uh, two assists, seven rebounds. He did go three for five from three, which is big and also played really good defense. Coming up, we're going to talk about Mike Muscala and the Thunder better the day, which is tied together in this game. And what better time to do that than when we're talking about our good friends over at betonline.ag. Betonline.ag is wishing you a happy new betting year as we continue to 
march to the playoffs in football and beyond, Bet Online remains the number one spot for the best sport wagering action for 2022. It's a new year and a new updated desktop and mobile website. Sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code Locked On to get started. From football, basketball, hockey, uh, boxing, UFC, your favorite Vegas casino games. Do not wait. Take advantage right now of these amazing offers for the 2022 uh, year. Bet online is the best way to bet on all your favorite sports, from basketball, again, baseball, football, conference championships this weekend. Everything you got going on. If you want to place a bet, place it at betonline.ag. Bet online, where the game starts. Make sure you go check them out. And again, use our code locked on at betonline.ag for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. We are back on the Locked On Thunder Podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your teams every day. I am your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Rylan underscore Styles. You can on Twitter at LO Thunder Pod. Email the show. LO Thunder on today's show brought to you by our good friends over at Price Picks and Bet on Today G. Really appreciate you listening to me recap this game against the Bulls. And again, your first listen every single day. We're here for you. So subscribe for free across all platforms. For your second listen, go check out the Lockdown Bets podcast. Lockdown Bets is a daily podcast getting you set for all of your betting needs. And you can go bet at betonline.ag. We're going to finish recapping out this Bulls game. Now, what's ahead this week, you might ask? That's a great question. A loaded week, despite the Thunder not playing a ton of games this week. We've got this Bulls recap. Yesterday, we have the Cavs recap. Now, tomorrow... We're going to grade the season for the Thunder. Thursday, we're going to have draft stock watch and in general, Thunder stock watch. And then Friday, a special crossover episode with Tony East of Locked On Pacers, all about the NBA trade deadline and how the Thunder and Pacers might be making some moves. I will also preview uh, this weekend's game between the Thunder and the Pacers as well. So very pivotal stretch of the tank coming up. Of course, Pacers and Thunder going on Friday night, and we'll see how this all unfolds with the traded line for the Thunder and the Pacers and every other team in the NBA. So a lot coming up on the Locked on Thunder podcast. Subscribe for free across all platforms so you don't miss an episode. And let's continue wrapping up this game against the Chicago Bulls. I do want to touch on Ty Jerome, who played 12 minutes tonight, scored six points, one rebound, two assists, two steals, a nice spark plug for this Thunder team. And, and again, uh, a reason why they got back in this game. Shout out Mike Muscala, who had 14 points, two rebounds, a block, four for 11 from three. His last one, the biggest one, 44% from the floor. He played 14 minutes, again, kind of fluctuating those minutes up and down because he's nursing that ankle injury. But his three was huge, folks. His buzzer-beating three, this time did not cost the Thunder draft position, as it has the last few years, but this time his buzzer-beating three won me some money because the better of the day was OKC plus one. And at the buzzer, Muscala drains it, and the Thunder cover the plus one spread. The money ball pick was SGA. And the money ball pick, of course, is who leads the team in three-pointers made that night. Lou Dort had three. SGA had two. But Jeremiah Robinson Earl and Mike Muscala both had four threes apiece. Four threes apiece. Again, Muscala, again, Jerry was the truth, 12 points, three assists, three rebounds, two steals, a block, four for six from three. Just a fantastic pick by Sam Presti. The MVP of the game is SGA, 31 points, just fantastic work by him. Thought about giving this to Mark, but I decided to keep it with a player and not be unconventional the way Mark is. I love it from Mark's staff, love it from Mark as well. Uh, awesome game for the Thunder, a beautiful tank game for the Thunder if you're into the tanking scenarios where – you get down 28, fight hard to come back, and then still lose by one, but get to see the ups and downs and the joy ride of this team kind of cruising at the end uh, in the process. So very fun game. We get a long layoff now. We're playing a ton of games all stacked up together. Long layoff, not going to play until Friday, but we still have all this content coming out for you every single day. So subscribe so you never miss an episode. And until tomorrow on Wednesday, be good and be good to one another.